everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new this video is actually a continuation from last week where we left off on the patio and that is where I'm picking back up in the beginning of this video I will link that video down below in case you missed it but in this video I am doing more outdoor cleaning as well as some deep cleaning in the inside and in the laundry room if you are new here welcome I'm so glad to have you here my name is Michelle and I'm a mom of two little girls and I do lots and lots of cleaning motivation this video is extra special because it's a collaboration with my friend Katie Sarah you guys are gonna absolutely love Katie she's a mom of two boys from Southern California channel is similar to mine where she does mostly cleaning motivation but she loves to share some home updates and decor and occasional recipes her home is absolutely gorgeous and she is also opening up her jewelry shop next week and I am so excited about that I'm going to link her channel down below so make sure that you check her out after this and make sure you leave her a comment and let her know that I sent you and if you're here from Katie's channel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Leave me a comment below and let me know your name and where you're from. So the first thing that we're doing to finish up on our patio is that we have taken everything out of the grill and we are using the power washer to spray down all of the grill racks. I say we, but it's really Chris, my husband. So if you're new here, this is Chris, my husband. He has been making appearances in a couple of my videos and he likes to do a lot of the outdoor type stuff. Um, I will jump in and do it every once in a while whenever he lets me. But uh, most of the time, this is, this is like his element, which I said that in one of my previous videos. So he's been making appearances here and there. So this September will be our eight year wedding anniversary and we have two beautiful daughters, Sailor who is three and Savannah who is one. I wanted to introduce them because you will definitely be seeing them throughout this video as well. So Chris actually took the whole grill out of the outdoor kitchen area and he's using the power washer to just spray it out. Next, this is actually where the grill sits. So whenever we took the grill out, there's just like dirt and cobwebs and everything underneath the area. So this, we actually use that area to like store stuff as well. So the first thing that we're doing is just getting the shot back and then trying to vacuum as much out as we can. Next, we, or he, took a wet rag and just kind of um, washed that whole area down because since it's outdoor, I don't think that it has to be perfect or anything, but we did want it to be a little bit nicer looking and less dirty and dusty with a bunch of cobwebs. So he did hose it down a little bit, but we were careful of the plugs and made sure that um, nothing was plugged in and all of the breakers were, were turned off. Next, we're just putting everything back in to where it goes. Now, power washing out the grill, we don't think that it made like a drastic difference. Like it didn't go from completely rusted um, to totally stainless steel, steel clear again. So obviously if we got the, like the grill scraper, it probably would have done a lot better job, but this was just kind of a fast way to like clean everything out. You got me paper thin, doing concrete thin. In my last video, we left off where we pretty much like power washed all of the furniture and also the floor. So now that it's the next day, everything is dried off and we're just bringing it back on the patio. Thank you. 
you can tell it's starting to get dark so we're bringing everything back onto the patio and the grill actually like lights up at the bottom so you'll see like the lights flicker different colors well it's not the grill it's like the whole outdoor kitchen thing if you can't tell already we are like outdoorsy people so we like to be outdoors we like to come and sit here and watch tv at night whenever the weather is nice so um, the cool thing about this like outdoor kitchen set when when we were thinking about buying it um, opposed to trying to build our own is that we got it from a place called paradise grills and it's actually removable so if we were to ever move then we could like take that whole set with us that's just something to think about if you were ever debating on getting an outdoor kitchen set. So here's what everything finally looks like cleaned up at night. The next thing that I'm going to take care of is the stairs and the whole upstairs playroom. You just know how to push all my buttons. Moved out of town and I erased your number. But still I find myself calling in the middle of the night. You can clearly see that I'm struggling to pick up this play tent. As you can see, this playroom is a disaster. It, it kind of always is. I have my two kids and then we have a lot of neighbors that will come over and they'll go upstairs and literally like in the blink of an eye, like you can just dump out some of these boxes and then it turns into total chaos like within minutes. My last couple of videos have been either like deep cleaning disasters or complete disasters where my house has been completely messy and it kind of got me thinking because although like 99.9% .9 of y'all are so amazing and so sweet to me I do get like comments here and there that are kind of unsettling you know like oh I can't believe you live in this you're a slob this is unacceptable I don't care if you're a busy mom it's no excuse for a dirty house and I honestly don't like to bring it up or give any attention to it unless there is some type of lesson to be learned through it and I know that you know a lot of people just say oh if you receive um, an unkind message then just delete it or ignore it and this doesn't have to be whether you have a channel or not it's people in our everyday lives may just say something oh look what you're wearing or something that could be really unkind to us and it's super super easy to say oh just ignore it brush it off because as humans we are hardwired for connection so if somebody is you know giving you an insult or breaking that connection then it does affect us but the truth is is that I have grown so much over this almost one year journey on YouTube and I have some helpful tips helpful tips that I think that I wish I would have known just younger growing up that have really helped me through you know kind of dealing with negativity the first thing is that your identity is the story that you tell yourself about yourself. So regardless of what somebody else thinks about you, unless you believe those thoughts, that does not become your identity. So don't ever let someone else put a thought in your head that doesn't determine who you are. Another thing is that your certainty must be stronger than anyone else's. So whatever you feel like your purpose in life is, whether it's to serve or to help or to be kind or to nurture and care for, don't let anyone else change what you were purposely driven to do. Not everyone may understand that, especially in the beginning, but if you're certain of what you're purposes and what you're called to do then it's okay if not everyone understands and lastly your mindset is everything so you have the choice to decide which inner voice is going to run the show so if someone is ever trying to tear you down and mostly it's probably more insecurities within themselves than it is about you personally don't let yourself believe any negativity that they are telling you Tony Robbins says that it takes 15 seconds of insane courage to change your voice. I also wanted to share this because I grew up with lots of insecurities and depression. So it takes practice and practice to change your thoughts and believe your positive thoughts. My channel will always be positive and uplifting and I hope that in any way, shape or form it is helpful to you as well.
I am always, always, always grateful and thankful for each and every single one of y'all's support. Sometimes I forget to breathe I'm looking in your eyes Wish you could see the things I see so I was able to pick up the playroom and my goal there was to get all of the toys off the floor back where they belong so that I can actually deep clean this space. This is my plug-in shark vacuum. I can't remember how old it is, probably at least six years old, but I like to use it upstairs because it has a lot more power than the cordless Dyson. So I'm just vacuuming up the area before I get out the shampooer. Someone has asked to see both of my daughter's rooms and I, I don't show them a whole lot only because those are probably the two rooms in my house that stay pretty clean. I do like to keep their rooms clean. There's just something about it that um, they're usually a lot cleaner than my room, but they don't actually like play with their toys in their room. So really the only time that I would be in their room is if I'm like putting away clothes or reorganizing their closets or the dresser. But other than that, there's really not much to clean besides when I need to vacuum every once in a while. But here I pulled out our Bissell Pet Pro Carpet Shampooer. So I am actually going to be shampooing up. This is Sailor's Room. And then I will also shampoo uh, the playroom. With this shampooer, it says that you do need to use their solution. So you basically mix one cap of the solution with the remaining amount of water. And some people have asked, um, is there, uh, or do you recommend a shampooer that you don't have to use their solution, their brand solution? And I am not sure. I haven't used a whole lot of other types of shampooers. This one is really good. So I do really recommend this one. It comes with a handheld hose that you can use if you need to uh, shampoo up like maybe in your car or a couch or smaller spaces. I actually pulled it out to do the stairs next and then I realized that it wasn't getting water to it. So I don't know if I broke it. Of course I just recommended it and then say that I basically broke it, but hopefully I can get it to work. Um, I just need to take the time to like take it apart and make sure I didn't um, do something to it from the last time I used it. I didn't end up like moving all the furniture and shampooing underneath some of the furniture because I shampooed this space not that long ago. I want to say it's been maybe a month or two. Um, maybe that is a long time for some people. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you shampoo your carpet, how often do you do it? Now that the upstairs is all shampooed, I'm just gonna let this sit and dry before putting the rug back down and some of the other stuff back. So like I said, I was very determined to try and shampoo up the stairs. And because I don't know what I did to my handheld device on this, which would have made it 100 times easier, I just decided to try and vacuum the stairs um, this way using the big shampooer and of course it's like halfway off of each stair and it's really heavy and it's really hard to like actually get it to shampoo but my goal is to basically just get those larger steps Like the others, they do not need to know. You said you fall with me. 
This did pick up a little bit of the rug itself, which is okay because the stairs haven't been shampooed in I couldn't even tell you how long. So once I got like halfway through the stairs, I pretty much called it quits. And here is the bucket of water. I'm actually surprised that it's not darker. Um, I know this is dark and gross, but I just expected it to be a lot darker. Of course, there's going to be lots of dog hair. That's just the staple in our house. So I lifted up the container and that is all dog hair. And I think there is some like debris from the rug as well. So I mentioned in our last video that we had ordered a new rug and that evening our new rug came in so my husband had to go do something that night so I am determined to get the new rug down that night so he helped me with the couch a little bit and then after that I'm kind of on my own putting it together and then putting everything back. It's the way that it moves and the way that it left So I can't get enough Think about it all the time I can get him off my mind So you can just see the discoloration from It's probably been two years of dirt and everything And of course all of the There's some dust and some toys underneath the couch So I'm going to clean up this area All behind the couch, the windowsills before I get my helpers to help me roll up the rug and get the new one out. So this rug we are actually keeping for now. So in an upcoming video, we are actually going to show you how we clean our rugs outside. And I typically keep two rugs at a time. So if one I had just washed, I might rotate them out. Um, and then we keep one of them in the attic. So if we can get this one super cleaned, then we will, we plan to keep it. Get him out of my head. I don't care what we do, everything's really new. Even if we're same bad, I hard to say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know I want him, na, 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 na. I hard to say, yeah, 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 yeah. I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it starts, when it starts. So I'm gonna vacuum up this area a little bit. A tip that I should have done is that if I wanted, um, and we used to do this whenever we would swap out our rugs, is to get a little piece of tape and tape it on the ends. That way you will know like exactly where the rug goes in the space that you have. I ended up getting this rug from Rugs USA and one thing, I loved the design of this rug and in the reviews, everyone said that it's a beautiful rug, but it's very thin. So I ended up ordering a rug pad to go with it, knowing that it was going to be pretty thin. Now I'm not a fan of super thin rugs, but I just really liked the color palette of of the rug and everything about it so i decided to give it a try and it was pretty cheap for a 9 by 12 size rug so here is the rug pad that i'm laying out uh, i'm just trying to get everything in the spot that i wanted it kind of looks i don't know i don't know what rug pads are supposed to look like i'm super horrible about getting rug pads i do have like the rug um the thing on the bottom where it keeps it from slipping, which is different from an actual rug pad. So um, I just decided to, you know, keep it and go with it. So I'm definitely not kidding when I say it's really thin, like it came folded up. Usually my rugs will come rolled up because they're a lot thicker than this, but this one came folded up with the rug pad and my kids are playing on here. I'm trying to get them to move so that I can spread it out. But you know, Savannah just thinks it's hilarious. But I am kind of unfolding it like a blanket and just kind of seeing how it will work in this space.
So my thoughts are I don't hate it enough to return it and because our rugs just we go through rugs all the time because of course I like lighter color rugs with a dark floor they tend to just get dirty so much faster. Once everything is back on it looks a lot nicer but what I noticed is that the rug pad was also a 9 by 12 but it was still like a few inches um, thicker than the actual rug so what I'm doing here is I just went in and decided to cut it that way I wouldn't have to keep messing with trying to get everything perfectly aligned and exact and that way I could just put it on there and not have to worry about the rug pad coming or showing underneath the rug All that time away from you. so since Chris left then my next challenge is to try and put the living room back together because I'm very impatient and I just wanted everything back where it was so we could sit down and relax for the rest of the night the little pads that I put under the furniture were to help slide the furniture so that I'm not um, scratching the floors. Before putting all the couches back, then I decided to go ahead and wipe down the window sills that are behind our couch. I'm also cleaning some of the baseboards, some of the dust on the baseboards behind the couch on that back wall. tricky part is getting everything back together without getting the rug all crinkled so this is always the hardest part I also have to get the couch the couches to like sync up and line up exact so that they can um, slide into each other this is the last section of the couch that I am going to attempt to put back so I have those um, furniture pads underneath so it's not actually scraping up the floor and I just plan to like push everything back and hopefully it doesn't um, crinkle up the rug that's another downfall about getting a super thin rug is that they tend to like crinkle up so I'm just trying to get all of the um, crinkling out of the rug After I put everything back together, it wasn't aligned properly. So it was a little bit too far back, so I couldn't actually fit. There's a there's a table, the console table on the back of the couch, and if I didn't push the couch in far enough, then the console table will kind of block the pathway to the back door. So I tried to like push the couch forward, and of course when I did that, it, it made the rug um, get all uneven again so now I'm just kind of taking the couch apart a little bit more and then trying to get the couch to be where it's supposed to be So could I and should I just wait for Chris to come home so that he can help me move this couch? Probably, but I don't always take the easy way out. So right before I brought the rug out, my whole living room area was, uh, was clean. So I'm just showing y'all like within just an hour or so like how fast it gets dirty and while I'm moving that table of course the water spilled all over the rug but that's just what happens and luckily it was just water so here's my after picture with the new rug and it wouldn't be my house if I didn't have blankets and toys all over the place so I'm just gonna quickly pick that up too 
Smiling like that, I could never resist it. Smiling like that, I can never resist it. This is the console table and I'm putting these little furniture pads underneath it and I tilted it a little too much and I broke one of my candle holders. You can't already tell I'm kind of impatient and I just like to get things done so I didn't want to take everything off and move it like I should have done. I know that would have been the right thing to do, the smart thing to do. Um, so now I just have to take everything off anyway and then vacuum up everything and then I will later on I'll glue the candle holder back together but leave me a comment below if this has ever happened to you not necessarily with the candle holder but if you were just trying to move or clean something and it accidentally broke I just wanna hold you. I just wanna look into your eyes and tell you that I want you. You know you make me feel so alive. Can't stop thinking about your day and night. Love it when you kiss me. But now that I have the living room put back together, I just need to pick up all the mess that was made in the making of that. But I set the rug in the garage because we are going to be cleaning that rug and make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Last thing that I'm going to do in this video is deep clean out my laundry room. I've been telling myself that I want to do like a DIY laundry room makeover and that has been like six months in the making. So I've been holding off doing like deep cleaning in my laundry room until then. But I realized that I just need to go ahead and clean it out and then whenever we get time or I get a better idea of what I want to DIY in my laundry room, then I'll focus on that later. But the first thing that I'm going to do is actually start the laundry and get some loads going and before I clean out everything in here. If I'm doing like towels or sheets and I'll usually use like one scoop of that glamorous wash and mix it with uh, the Tide laundry detergent and it makes it smell really, really good. The top of our washing machine has way too much stuff and clutter. I don't know how it accumulates. I think that we like find stuff in pockets and just throw it up on the top of the dryer and everything just accumulates up there and it needs to be cleaned off. I just want to look into your eyes. You know you make me feel like I'm alive. You are wipe the baseboards that often but for some reason like I feel like in our laundry room we just get so much dust is anyone else that way do you feel like your laundry room especially accumulates a lot more dust than other areas in your house leave me a comment below let me know I debated on actually moving the washer and dryer and cleaning underneath those, but Chris is not home again and I decided I'm not that bold. I'll just stick with the couches. I'm just using the Method All Purpose Cleaner. I think it's the lavender scent and I really do like that scent and a microfiber cloth to wipe down the dryer as well as the top of the washing machine. The top of the washing machine does get more like sticky stuff on it just because we use the liquid detergent, but I do want to get like some bins or some trays or something to actually put that on there. I didn't get any like fun new organizing stuff for the laundry room. I do plan to do that hopefully soon, but my goal in this video was to just get it cleaned up. So 
so I've got all of the laundry room cleaned out and now all of the stuff that I have needs to get decluttered and then go back in the laundry room. These are actually airtight sealed containers that we keep the dog food in, but I didn't realize like how dusty and dirty that they actually get. Our laundry baskets are also extremely old. I never really thought twice about getting cute laundry baskets until now. Also, we've been using wipe boxes, like the Pampers wipes boxes, to store um, rags in or the stuff for our the extra accessories from our vacuum. And I remembered that I had these old bins from, I used to have them upstairs, but since I purchased something new, I had been just hanging on to those. So I decided to organize, use those bins and organize some of the supplies in there. I think for now they look better, but I don't actually plan to use those specific bins long-term in there, only because they're really tall. So whenever I need to get something, I, want to actually see what's in there and I don't want to have to take the whole bin down just to grab a rag out. But that's the only flaw with those bins is that they're just a little bit too tall but for now they work and it makes it look a lot nicer. In my last deep clean video, I tried several different products that were recommended from all of you guys. And I did get another recommendation about e-cloths. Some people were curious about those. So I think that I'm actually going to purchase a bundle of those e-cloths and then try them out in a video next month. When I looked into e-cloths, um, you're just supposed to use, they have different cloths for different purposes and you just use water and they're supposed to help kill 99% of germs without any product. Can't you see the problem with just caring about yourself? Maybe so like I said, these bins are a little bit tall and you can see like it's hard to actually reach and pull stuff out of them, but I think that it makes it look a little bit cleaner for now. So I'm finally finished and I just wanted to thank all of you guys for watching this video. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. I post weekly every Thursday and this way you won't miss a video. Bye, dear.